Hello, welcome to Sheepdog Says. I'm Sheepdog, and uh, today, after saying that I'd probably start getting a bit hairier um, from next week on my episodes, I went the opposite end of the spectrum and had a, a shave and a haircut. So we can truly measure now how much this testosterone gel has an impact next week. It's for science. I'm a scientist. Um, I mentioned last week that I thought I'd done an episode about stag do's and I, it turns out I haven't or I'm at least uh, trusting Shaz in the comments who said that I haven't done an episode. Um, the reason I was thinking about them is twofold. Um, one of my colleagues has went on two stags, the same one twice oddly. I, he went on a stag do and then his friend repeated that stag do the next week, same place, same events with the same people. He found it a little bit odd but he said it was a great time. Um, I've been on three, I think, in my life. Uh, one was a little bit less manly. It was a, it was called a hag do, and um, we it was just a group of the uh, bride and groom's friends <clears throat> all went to a, a theme park together. It was a fun weekend, but it wasn't really what the spirit of a stag do is about. I wasn't allowed to take him on a stag do in case I, um, I ended up causing him a mischief or something like that, getting him in trouble or just generally doing something that I shouldn't have done, which is unfair because I'm not that kind of person. I'm not exactly going to lead him astray or get him into any kind of pain or trouble. But nonetheless, I think his stag ended up being a, a, a trip to the pub with his dad and family like that, which is fine, each to their own. I know that some of my other friends who I've... I met already married, they said their stags were pretty much the same a night down the pub. Um, <clears throat> I was quite lucky that I have a core group of friends from where I grew up in Essex. Um, there's like eight of us who all went to school together or college, depending on when we met the, each other. Um, but we've been a group since, I'd say, roughly year nine at school, year eight at school. We've all known each other for various lengths of times and stuff like that. So... When, we, when it comes to me getting married and announcing it and everything, they were like, right, we need to arrange this stag. This is going to be great. Um, and it was. It was really good fun. We had a great weekend. I got a lot of punishment. Um, my story kind of goes quite far back on this because a long time ago, when they were all at uni, we used to visit each other and we had a weekend in Canterbury where we played a game called Pub Golf, which I was winning on the 10th hole. Um, I'd done every drink in one including, I think we were going lager, cider, ale, vodka, milkshake, lager, cider, ale, quadruple vodka, and then we were going out. So I think it was eight holes, if I remember rightly. I'd done them all in one. I was still standing, and then I apparently went and had loads of cider to celebrate, and then I woke up on a drip in A&E, and uh, no hangover, fortunately, but... Yeah, it wasn't one of my finest moments. But along the way, someone took the worst picture of me that's ever existed. It's, I'm ill, I'm being sick. <clears throat> Someone's ended up undoing my shirt to try and keep it from being getting dirty. I look the worst. Um, so for, on my stag, of course, they printed that picture on a t-shirt. Um, on the front was the picture, on the back was a tally, and the question was, would you marry this man? And I had to walk around asking women in the street whether they would marry me. Now, I'm quite proud to say that of the, I don't know, 25 women we asked, only two said no. So, you know, if, if my wife had not turned up on the day, I had 23 backups. That was quite good. Um, I had to walk around with a little, funny enough, a lamb handcuffed to me to signify lamp up who that wasn't my nickname then. It's just a coincidence. But she was the lamb because she my wife was, I think, uh, six or seven months pregnant at that point. Um I think this was November, just before she was born, uh, January 1st. So um, it was just one of those things where, you know, she, she, was, she was pregnant with a baby, so take, take the uh, the lamp up to me. I had to look after it. I got punished if the, if the lamb got hurt overnight. I had to wear a... Uh, I couldn't find a stag mask, so it was a deer mask. So there's all these pictures of me walking around in a deer mask with would you would you marry this man. Um, I then had to change in the night time to a uh, t-shirt that said Chelsea till I die and up the hammers on the front and back. Obviously being a Spurs fan that didn't go down well. Um, but it was great fun you know we had, we had a lot of good things you know a lot of good drinks. I got punished a bit because um, despite what happened at the pub golf the next year or whenever this was when I 
was going on my stag do, literally the week before, I was told by the doctors that I shouldn't drink spirits anymore for a while because they said that I you know, was showing some sort of fatty liver issue. He'd done all these tests and he basically said to me, you shouldn't drink at all. I said, well, hang on, it's my stag do next week. And he honest to God said to me, as long as you drink just kind of, you know, low level percent, I'm talking like a beer, a cider, it's only 4%, 5%. You'll be all right. Don't do excess. Just you've got to you've got to rein this in. So I told them this on my stag, just as they're getting trays of shots in, and um, yeah, they weren't impressed. They they booed. They they hissed. They jeered, um, and I deserved it in a way. I mean, it was all true, but it was one of those things where the 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 uh, the time honoured thing is that you get the stag hilariously drunk and you punish him. Um, that doesn't mean I got away without any punishment at all. Um, we we did two events while I was there. We did paintball, which is quite a standard one, and we did mud buggy racing. And the mud buggy racing was quite... Uh, I was okay with that. Like, it was awesome. I just got to mud buggy race. I was quite brutal. I didn't corner with any kind of fear. I would run them off the road. I treated it like banger racing you know if they were in my way I wanted to beat them um I ended up coming third I think overall in that and getting a medal at the end which was great but then when we did paintball obviously being the stag I was on the opposite team to my friend so I was on a team with a load of eight nine ten twelve year olds and maybe one other adult who I accidentally shot in the ankle um so he, he was hobbling around there was a point in the midway bit where I pulled off my mask and I was so angry at these kids for not listening to directions because we were losing so much that there was actual steam coming from my head. You know, I was just furious with them for, like, it was capture the flag and I'd say to them, right, we need to be doing this, you need to be running that way, you need to be running that way, you run in and get it, I'll cover you or I'll run in, whatever you want to do. And then the whistle would go and they'd all just run off in different directions and I'd just be standing there thinking, well, this this has all gone gone wrong um but no it was great fun and then right at the end as they always do with the stags they got me and this other stag to stand in this target range thing and they said to us if you can run to the to the front you are you, you're you're free but between you and safety are all your friends with paintball guns shooting you so i was nervous because it wasn't only my friends it was so there was like i think 10 or 11 of us that went in the end so 10 of them facing me shooting it's like my mates, my brother-in-law, and some other people. And then there's the other stags group. They're all primed, ready to shoot. And the second he blew, I ran for this wall. There was a wall just in the middle. Stood with my back to it. I just watched this other stag just get shot to pieces. He just got covered in paint. It was ridiculous. Um, I waited till all the bullets were gone. I put my head around. A shot would come. I'd stick back there. I just rested on, on my laurels. It was like something out of a cartoon. I was just there laughing to myself, thinking I'm all good. Um, I remember we got home and I actually thought, you know what, I've been all right here. It was good fun. Um, I got away without a bit of pain. I got a bit of embarrassment. We went to the Spearmint Rhino in Brighton, um, which is not really my thing, but it was an interesting experience. I'd never been in a club like that before. Um, I spent most of the... My friends were very generous. They paid for dances, but I spent most of the dances telling them which of my friends were more likely to pay for dances and helping them make more money. <laughs> I was like, go talk to him. He'll enjoy it. You know, he'll enjoy it more. Um, that sort of thing. Because it was just one of those... I don't know. I've never been in one before. Um, but I thought I'd got away with it quite nicely. And then right at the and they said, oh, come over here, group hug. And I thought to myself, hang on a minute, this is this is going to be punishment, isn't it? This isn't going to be good. Um, so I walked into the middle of the group hug and they just basically grabbed me, tied me up, wrote all over me, swear words, colours, moustache, whatever, just everything, completely covered me in ink, tied me up, threw me in the boot, drove to my mum's house, just rang the doorbell, threw me on the doorstep and left. And um, I mean, I thought it was brilliant. Like most people, I think, would would find that entertaining. They might obviously some people would find it quite harsh. I I just I think for a split second when they said come over, I hadn't thought about it. But as I walked into the trap, I was like, hang on a minute, like this is your stag do. You're not going to get out of that easily. So there's some funny pictures of me completely covered and wrecked with all this stuff. Um, we agreed then that each stag do from that point onwards would get slightly bigger and slightly more brutal on the stag. So with the next one we did. Um, we didn't go abroad, but we went to Birmingham and we did, I, I mentioned this on Mature Gamer at one point, we did a zombie apocalypse training boot camp thing um, where basically they train you to fight zombies. Um, a horde would run at you and you had to have your arm up with a big shield and they'd run at you and attack you and you have to fend yourself. Um, they gave you guns that shot paintballs, but when you shot them, they're like, they don't work. You're going to have to hit them with batons. And so, I mean, I must have 
probably, I think I, I got pinned down at one point and I'd, I'd have been dead, but I got rescued. And then right at the end, we had to basically, we had to save a police officer from being killed by zombies. And we didn't, she ended up getting killed. Um, we had to do some target practice. And the bloke said, do we have to run, jump on the floor, fire, 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 and do it? I couldn't do it. I made an absolute fool of myself. I was the least manly person there. Absolute joke. Um, you know, complete wimp. And then right at the end, and I thought, you know what? Other than the nearly dying from being pinned, I've done all right. I shot a zombie. I hit him. And then he, he didn't he didn't die because it was right at the end. He was like, well, you, you might as well die either way. So I got out and right at the, begin at the end of the whole thing. I was really miffed because I thought, damn it, I'd have survived if... Because, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I, don't, I don't think I would have done it. I probably died two or three times. But it was great fun going around on the back of these machines. The bloke's talking to us and suddenly these zombies came over the hill in a distance and through the warehouse bit and they're coming at us. And we're like, oh, God, quick, 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 quick. Um, I, being, a, again, a massive worse, I couldn't get the helmet to go on properly and comfortably. So I had to get me another helmet that was open because my delicate little snowflake head couldn't handle it. Um, but no, it was awesome. And again, like the people who do that, they're like students who've been like done up to look really, really cool. And it's probably one of the best things we've paid to do as an event like that. It was, it was genuinely awesome. Um, you know, we, we had a great time with that. When we went back out in Birmingham for the, the general punishing of the stag, um, by this point I was a healthy, uh, person again, didn't have any kind of doctor's note to get out of anything. So my friends reminded me of the fact that on my stag I'd cried foul and, and got out of it. They made me wear a, uh, a mask with a big giant penis on it uh, around Birmingham for the evening. Um, I had to do the shots that the stag did. I had to take some of the punishments the stag had to take. I was lucky um, because when we went to the Spearmint Rhino with him, he was on stage getting hit, kicked, punched, they were absolutely abusing him. Um, this time I just kind of sat with uh, my mates just having a beer, not really, you know, I didn't get involved in any of that except watching my mate get beaten. That was obviously brilliant fun. Um, it's weird, like, it's not the sort of thing you get to do that often. Staying, We stay in, like, a hostel or whatever. I've said that when we get to, like, the, the eighth or ninth person, we need to be going to Vegas, but we also need to be absolutely destroying the stag um i was looking up things like in i think it's the uh, eastern europe you can pay 200 euros to have fake police just burst into a club arrest your mate throw him in a cell and just humiliate him and shout at him and strip him down and throw water over him and just treat him like a monster and then the next morning just be like we're only joking um and i just i just really want to i just really want it to happen to one of them i just want to do it i think it'll be the best thing ever i think that i mean i i think i'd know it was fake if it happened to me i don't let i would hate for it to happen to me but some of my friends wouldn't see it coming and i think it would freak the hell out of them um, and then the next day you'd just be like, <laughs> um, I don't know if they film that kind of thing, but yeah, it'd be awesome. I'm just trying to think what, uh, what else we did on that one in Boeing. I know we ended up in like, uh, some sort of walk about watching wrestling at like 2am in the morning. I've never watched a live WrestleMania type thing before. And, um, and that was a bit bizarre, but it was good fun. We got to drink late. Um, I'm just trying to think what else there was, but no, I'm looking for, it made me realise that my friend Dave is getting married at some point in the near future. And whilst none of us, I mean, one of his other friends from uni is the, um, is the best man. But so I guess it'll be his responsibility to arrange it. And he's got a, a much larger group of mates from uni that will be doing that. Um, but I was like the first one who got married out of all my friends in that group. So it was quite like new to us all. Whereas this time we're a bit older, we've got a bit more money, we've got a bit more experience. He's a bit more hardcore. He's a much more manly a man than I am. So to break him is going to take some serious, serious ammunition. Um, so I, I'm kind of hoping he doesn't watch my videos because I mean, actually, he he's just had a kid. He'll be too busy for that. But we need to break him when the time comes. Um, but yeah, I, I'd love to hear your stories. I, I think stag dudes are awesome. They have this reputation of being a bit uh, and whatever. Um, I remember talking to Kev about doing one. He said it sounds like his idea of hell. But when you tailor it right, when you get it right for the mood of the people, it works. You know, my friends knew that I wasn't particularly the sort of person who want to go to a Spearmint Rhino and that kind of thing, but they did treat it in a good way. I mean, they had some jokes they played when we were in there, but generally speaking, they were good about it. It was just more of a, look, this is something you've got to do. It's the rite of passage. Um, and it was like, yeah, fine. Whereas with my mate, they knew they could get away with punishing him um, in a different way. I'm hoping, I, I don't think I have to do the, uh, the punishment every time. Otherwise I might have to rein it in on Dave. Um, I might just refuse, but um, yeah, it's one of those things. It's uh, it is a good rite of passage, and um, there's something else I wanted to say. Now it's just escaped me, 
But anyway, no, I really like it. I want to hear what, whether you've got any ideas of what we could do with future ones. Um, you know, any, any suggestions? I mean, I want to get Kev on one at one point because uh, he plans on marrying Anna eventually, I think. And I think he needs to have a proper punishment. He can't just go to the pub, have a few beers and do whatever. He's not allowed to do a hag do because that's just wrong. Uh, not that Anna's not welcome, but if she's coming, she has to help us punish him. She can't let us not punish him. It has to be done. It's part of the, it's part of the process. Um, we've always said that if someone gets remarried after eight, nine in our, in our in my social group, then it'll just keep getting worse. So if somebody's on their fourth wedding, it's just going to be four times worse than their first wedding. So, yeah, it'll be fun to see how this goes. But um, no, I'm looking forward to whenever that one ends up being for Dave and for Kevin and for other people in my group, because now I'm older, I think it's become something that's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, as I say, let me know your stories. Let me know your thoughts. Um, if I remember what I was going to say, I might edit it in. It's, it's plaguing my mind now. I need to get in the habit of, if I forget what I was going to say, I need to just stop um, thinking about it and move on. But whatever it was, it's just dangling there at the moment. So anyway, um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment. I like hearing from you. Thanks very much. I'm one away from 200 now, so hopefully we'll get to that today. Um, yeah, give me a subscribe, a like, and all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.